truly astonishing. It is a new star, Melchior. They can doubt of that. And it is in the sign of Pisces. And four-pointed. In every respect, it corresponds to the star predicted in the writing of Zoroaster. In every apparent respect, yes. But uh, we are scientists, Gaspar. Well, of course, and it but... is a poor scientist who leaps headlong to a conclusion. Which is based on prophecies. If I could but find a passage. Ah, Balthazar. Good news. A new star. Look at it. Yes, yes, I know. Even down on the street, I could hear snatches of your glamorous scholarship. There is cause for clamor. Ah, here. Melchior. This first is the prophecy of Balaam, as recorded by our great teacher. A star shall rise out of Jacob, and a scepter shall spring up from Israel. And then from a seer known as Isaias, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And Zoroaster himself adds that a new star in the heaven shall signalize the event. I do not say these prophecies are without meaning, even import to the Judeans, but are they pertinent to our studies? Say you, a new star is not pertinent to the science of the heavens? I speak now only of the prophecies. Might not the two be inseparable? For long years, the Judeans have awaited the coming of a messiah. I do not think it amiss that the birth of such a one be accompanied by a sign in the heavens. <laughs> but that is judicial astrology. Gaspar would make sorcerers of us with his talk of a virgin bearing a child. It is not my talk. I mark it a phenomenon. It is equally phenomenal that the murky waters of astrology are such strong wine to your imagination. I will say no more. I have no wish to dampen the youth's ardor, Melchior, but we are men of science. A child born of a virgin, a child without a father, or even more fantastic, a child of God. Melchior, Balthazar, come quickly. What do you see? What is it? Look, look yourself. Can it be possible? It's an illusion. A trick of the eyes. This is no illusion. The star is moving. Moving toward the west, toward Israel. Such an occurrence is most unnatural. I want to say supernatural? I am a man of science, not of magic. Even this will yield a natural explanation. Balthazar, dear friend, have you never understood? What is seen may be the guide to what is unseen. Are we then to follow the star where it guides us? Melchior has just said, the seen may be a guide to the unseen. Might not this star then lead us to the young king foretold in the prophecy? There is merit in Gaspar's proposal. We are satraps, men of position in Chaldea. Is it not then fitting that we should seek out the new ruler and do him homage? A king born of a virgin? Is that what we seek? Or a king whose star moves in the heavens? Which is less possible? Very well. I will go with you. But not for an instant do I set any store by these prophecies. It's simply that, as a scientist, I... I feel it only my duty to, to investigate. into the heights of the city. Low clouds, murk, a score of natural causes. Also, might it not be a sign that Jerusalem is our destination? There's a bare possibility. What think you, Melchior? I think were that possibility allowed, we might then find the newborn king to be son and heir to Herod, Judea's present monarch, Melchior. Might not these travelers have news of the infant? We are strangers in your land. Our caravan has come from far across the desert. Perhaps you can direct us. To what? To the birthplace of the newborn king. 
whose star we have seen in Babylon. Newborn king. I know of no king but Herod. And that butcher has no infant son. He already has murdered two of his sons. Amroth, take care. I'm sick of talking in whispers. Let these strangers know Herod for the mad dog he is. Let everyone know. Please. It, it is late, Amroth. If we are to be in Bethlehem by morning... All we'll... right, my brother. I'm sorry. I cannot help you. Is it possible we have erred? That an infant king has not been born? We may have acted prematurely, This but... is no case of error or prematurity. But the herdsman just said... The herdsman? A barefooted ignoramus. Do you consult a carpenter when philosophy confuses you? Who are the rich travelers? What did they want? They are from Babylon. They have come that far. I heard you speak to them of Herod. They came seeking a newborn king. A new king, indeed. Not while the old one lives, if he can help it. <laughs> <laughs> Those were their words. And they said that they had followed his star across the desert. His, his star? They spoke of a star? What is so strange in that? If they have seen a star, it may have come to pass. The foretelling of the promised messiahs. The very words of the scripture. And the star shall rise out of the east. I remember from my prayers. A promised prophet sprung from David. That is he, the Shiloh foretold by Jacob. Run, soldiers, run! run. Ah! 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 Let us go. We have done nothing. Hold your tongue, you. Who is responsible for this treasonous gathering? This was no gathering. We, we but stopped at the well to drink. Don't lie to me. I speak the truth. We were bound for Bethlehem, as the others, to register for the tax. Don't believe his lying tongue. I heard him, all of them. They were plotting against our beloved monarch. She lies. We but repeated what the Persian travelers told us. I tell you, they were plotting. I heard this one call Herod a butcher. And he told him a new king, a usurper to the throne. I did but quote holy prophecy. There is no treason in that. They are lying traitors, all of them. Who do you believe? These disloyal assassins are a trusted agent of the Crown. A spy! Silence! Your word is proof enough for me, old woman. But the tribunal in Jerusalem requires a signed deposition. I am at your disposal, good soldier. So, a new king is coming. Well, it's a shame he won't get here in time to save your heads. You lying head! May heaven curse you for this. I'll teach you respect for woman for a oh! Bring them down, both of them. My leg! I'm hit! Put your arm about me. Run, Benjamin, run! Round up the others. We march for Jerusalem. Get out. I can go no further. Save yourself. Amra, they are leaving. The soldiers are marching away. Marching away? It is a miracle. I, I, I... My brother. I've lost too much blood. The arrow. I know. I will remove it, Amra. Do it quickly. Quickly. I shall. Here. This may help. Now, think of something. Think of the new king. We cannot travel by way of Jerusalem now. The soldiers. There are many roads to Bethlehem. We will find one. Perhaps I'll be strong enough to travel when the moon rises. There must be no talk of travel until you have rested. You know, Benjamin, I did think of the new king. It made the pain easier to bear. The new king? Will he ever come to save us, Amra? I know nothing of signs or portents by which the wise men of Persia can look in the future. I... 
I believe you will, my brother. I believe. If the new king were born within the gates of Jerusalem, would not that be a signal for celebration in the city? Admittedly. Then we have but to enter the gates, find the first street strewn with flowers, and our search will be ended. <laughs> I give you Gaspar. Simple equations for the naughtiest problem. We shall see, Balthazar. We shall see in Jerusalem if simple equations are to be mocked. All right. Does that seem suspicious? Not in the slightest. At this very moment, they're awaiting an audience with your majesty. I thought it best to view the rumors. Rumors? Half the city is in an uproar because of these, these meddling Persians, and you talk to me about rumors. I am happy to report the streets are now free of demonstrators, your majesty, and my soldiers have taken scores of hostages. Do not boast to me of hostages, Commander. The situation calls for more subtle tactics than another mass execution. It has worked in the past. It's in the past. My loyal subjects had no cause around which to rally save down with Herod. But hail the newborn king. Is a shibboleth fit to carry any insurrection? But there is no proof of such a king. These Persian stargazers are doubtless part of some plot. I think not, dear Fally. They are clearly men of learning and high birth. If I might make a suggestion, sire. Exactly. These men, the Magi, must have had some good reason to travel so far in search of this newborn pretender. Might then they not give us some word of his whereabouts, if questioned discreetly? <laughs> well are you called master of spies, Merrick. Falak bid them enter. I will welcome them personally. With a caution, sire. I speak. Betray no concern for your throne before these foreigners. Caesar Augustus has ears even in Babylon. That's worthy advice, Merit. No word of this unrest must reach the Emperor. Your servant. Your Majesty, the illustrious visitors from Chaldea, Melchior, Balthazar, Gaspar. Welcome, noble scholars. Your presence does honor to my court. The honor is ours, Your Majesty. Felig, have wine brought. Pray, seat yourselves. And tell me in detail this latest news that has caused such rejoicing in the city. It was our earnest hope, Majesty, to learn the details from you, since we had had but the star to guide us. The star? Oh, yes, that which brought you here. It was clearly visible in Babylon. Did you not see it? I do not recall my astrologer remarking it. Perhaps he did. And beset as I am with affairs of state, it escaped my memory. There is little to tell, except that it is new and corresponds in many particulars to the star mentioned in the Judean prophecies, foretelling the birth of an infant king. But you have no knowledge where this infant king is born. Uh, regrettably, no. We had thought it would be here, especially after the star vanished over the city. Vanished, you say? Just at sunset. We have not seen it since. A merit. Have the scribe bring these scrolls of the prophecies, or, or better still, I will see for myself. Felix, my trusted commander, will entertain you during my brief absence. Pray do not disturb yourselves. Well, I am looking, Majesty, but the oracles are so numerous. Here, from the prophet Balaam, a star shall rise out of Jacob, and a scepter... Yes, we know about the star. But the place, man, tell me the place. Under Isaiah is written, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. But no mention of where. A virgin? What hidden meaning does that disguise? Perhaps the infant's mother is thought to be a woman unwed. From the oracles of Micchaeus, and thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, now art a little one among the thousands of Judah, out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be the ruler in Israel. Bethlehem. There is more. And he shall grow up as a tender plant before him, and as a root out of thirsty ground, despised and the most abject of men. Enough. A child is born in Bethlehem of a woman. A 
a virgin. The woman, then, is the key. Find her, and you have the infant. Ah, but finding her, sire, that is another problem. Child's play, a quarter or two of my own soldiers searching the city. And in the morning, it will have spread to the corners of the kingdom that even newborn babes strike fear in the heart of Herod. Yes, I had not considered that. But the child must be found. And quickly. Perhaps, sire, if I might make a suggestion. I conclude from the prophecies I have just seen that this child is truly sent from God. And you, a king, wish to pay him homage? Kings or commoners are one in the sight of the Most High. It is for this reason that His Majesty so earnestly requests your help. Go then to Bethlehem and search diligently after the child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I also may come and adore him. We are honored. I will not stay you then. My anxiety to behold the newborn surpasses yours. May good fortune be your companion, noble Herod. And yours, gentle sage. is done. The trap is set. I know not who seeks to raise up this rival power upon the ruins of my own. But I have not poured out like water the blood of the Maccabees or of my own wife and children to smooth the way to the throne for the family of David. Be this child prince of the land or prophet of God. He must die. No trace of it, not a glimmer. And close as we are to Bethlehem, one would think. Did not your last calculations place the star just below Venus in the ascendant? Balthazar. Oh? A thousand pardons, Melchior. What did you ask? Good friend, you realize you've scarcely spoken since we quit Jerusalem? Have I not? What troubles you? If I but knew myself, the star, our science, a nagging voice within me that will not be still. And what says this voice? Among other things, trust not King Herod. Why not? Saw you the fear on those travelers at the well, the silent beaten faces in the streets of the city? Betimes a monarch must take cruel measures. Betimes. But thrones cannot be raised on hate and fear and nothing else. He paints his face to hide the lines of age. He dyes his beard and locks. An old man's vanity. The infant king we seek, the virgin queen. Think you that Herod means to bow before them? Think you at last the virgin queen exists? I know not what to think. But yield to me on this. Let not our lips inform that evil man of, of whatever comes to pass. My accursed leg. Seems we've been walking for hours. Amra, we must be very near to Bethlehem by now. All night long I've been praying for the Redeemer that God has promised our people. He will come. I too have prayed. Benjamin, look! Beyond the hill, a campfire. And men around it. Shepherds. See their flocks along the slope? Come, they will give us shelter. Who approaches? Two herdsmen like yourself from Galilee. Give us shelter, I beg you. My brother is hurt. I came in here through the hills. We escaped. Some soldiers of Herod near Jerusalem. Amra was wounded by one of their arrows. Count yourself fortunate, lad. Not many escaped. You were safe here. Come right by the fire.
We are safe, Hamra. Did I not tell you they would give us shelter? Are you come for the tax registration? Aye. Bethlehem is our birthplace. All day the roads have been clogged with travelers. One would think a great event were at hand. Maybe. Have you not heard the rumors of the newborn king? No. It is said his star was seen in the east. Often in the past have I heard such rumors, but never of a star. Perhaps I shall live to see. One can only offer prayer and have faith. Rest you now. At dawn, we will lead you to Bethlehem. and protect us. Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy that shall be to all the people. For unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, in the city of David. And this shall be a sign unto you you shall find the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Look! The star! <laughs> he has come at last. He has come. And to think, my brother, it should be told by an angel to us. Born in the city of David, here in little Bethlehem. And this night, we are to behold him. The angel promised. Come, let us make haste. The star is going low in the heavens. The star, look. Is it possible? Yes. The star is pointing there. Our journey is over. We shall see. Behold! Herdsmen. Shepherds, by the look of them, carrying gifts. But surely this cave cannot be the birthplace of a king. Has not the star led us here? And he shall grow up. Despise it. And the most abject of men. What are you seeking? Have you also brought a gift? And have you not?
Have you not come to adore him? But you are here. You have come a great distance. There is but a short way left to go. Let me lead you to him. I hope you like this program. It was made by the family Rosary Crusade to serve the cause of family prayer. Your family on its knees in your own sacred home in prayer in a thousand eloquent ways say to God, Dear God, we believe in you. We love you. We recognize you. We adore you. We thank you. We depend upon you. Dear Father, you mean more to our little family than all the wealth of the world. My dear people, that's what family prayer means to God. That's what family prayer enables a grateful family to say to God for his love for them. I hope your family will put this treasure in your home. And I hope that your voices will join the millions to say, the family that prays together stays together. And a world at prayer will be a world at peace. Mm -hmm.